Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Not once has a man been so lucky, so gifted and properly positioned for an exploit as Gary Cooper. This Hollywood cowboy and his moral righteousness made a perfect romantic hero with those dashing performances, which always won him extra girl off-screen. A man that turns people's romantic fantasy into personal reality, as spotless female co-stars take turns to warm his bed in an effortless philandering that would make him an insatiable cowboy hero with a special skill for capturing the ladies, including forbidden women. Did Gary Cooper also have an intimate with men? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Gary Cooper is a classic example of a victorious romantic movie star who made his powerful presence felt between the last era of the silent film and that of the golden age of Hollywood. Displaying natural talent adjudged to have assertive influences on men and women, Cooper effectively conducted his 36 years in the entertainment industry to his advantage. He was so good at acting that he became one of the most preferred leading men in his traditional cowboy romantic films, even as he devised a peculiar way of incorporating his character role-play in war films, adventures, crime and comedy genres. Cooper's resounding contribution to the entertainment industry could not have been better appreciated because he remained on the motion picture Herald Poles as among the top ten movie personalities for 23 successive years, with Quigley's annual poll placing him among the top money-making stars for 18 years. Cooper may have played the role of an inexperienced man at the earliest part of his career as seen in The Virginian, but did sustain his moral position and hope to win by merits. The character progresses as he rode along, appearing in authoritative disciplines like that of a soldier, pilot, westerners, sailors and so on. Cooper was able to satisfy the fantasy dreams of his fans on screen while also doing a follow-up off-screen with most of his female co-stars falling victim to his charms, making him a master philanderer an act he was so careless about even with married women. His talent was excellent at each stage of his career, as fans would see him make a dynamic change from a romantic hero to one fighting the cause of the commoners. His role as Mr. Deeds and for whom the bell tolls comes in handy. Cooper's on-screen persona represents an ideal American hero with soaring height, a costume-prepared handsome face and a sincere attitude that he displays. He was seen as a man who wants to get things done with less rationalisation, and as a result using the essence of climax to his advantage. Regarding what people think about Cooper, Charlton Heston noted that he was the kind of man Americans would like to be, more than any actor that's ever lived. The side of Gary Cooper that contradicts his movie integrity is his disreputable philandering, with his most pronounced flirts being the ladies who are also part of his fantasy world. This provided too many scandals, with some analysts saying that if he didn't, Cooper was ready to take all the women to bed regardless of their age. And so, as fans cherish Gary Cooper as their Hollywood innocent Superman, many do not know his ugly history as an infamous womanizer behind the screen. His act of seduction permeates mostly with those he shouldn't have been with, with some writers describing him as one that is always falling prey to his forbidden desires. This often leaves the women with nervousness, vulnerability, grief and unbelievable pain that leads to a tragic end. Frank James Cooper was born on the 7th of May 1901 in Helena, Montana, to English parents Alice and Charles Henry Cooper. Cooper, as a young lad, learned to ride horses, hunt and fish at his father's ranch, where he got his earliest knowledge of life in the hinterland that would play a part in the later part of his life. Alice wanted Cooper to be educated in their hometown and had enrolled him at Dunstable Grammar School in Bedfordshire. He stayed here while he studied Latin, French and English history, adhering to English school discipline and learning the necessary social styles. Returning to the U.S. in August 1912, Cooper continued his education at Johnson Grammar School in Helena. 
Recovering from a car accident and on the doctor's advice, Cooper got back to his father's farm to further improve his health, a piece of advice that was criticised for being responsible for his usual stiff, off-balanced walk and slightly angled horse-riding style. Leaving Helen High School in 1918 in respect to that for his father's ranch, Cooper turns into a complete cowboy. Even he later joined Gallatin County High School in Bozeman, Montana, where an English teacher, Ida Davis, advised him to concentrate on academics and to take part in debating and dramatics. He later referred to Davis as the woman partly responsible for him abandoning his cowboy lifestyle. Soon he was inspired to join the creative profession as he signed up for Grinnell College in Iowa and was said to have done excellently but was not recognised in the school's drama club. Although Cooper's drawings and watercolour paintings got dormitory exhibition, even he was referred to as art editor by the college's annual publication. When Cooper's father left Montana and relocated the family to Los Angeles, Cooper met two friends from his past who now work as film add-ons and stunt riders in small budget western films. Thereafter, Cooper worked as a film add-on for $5 daily and as a stunt rider for double that amount. He and Talbot turned close pals and chasing companions. Sometime in 1925, Cooper started his career with the likes of The Thundering Herd and Wild Horse Messer with Jack Holt. After serving many Poverty Row studios and hoping to go beyond the dangerous stunt work for acting roles, Cooper paid for a screen test and employed director Nan Collins as his agent. It was Collins who advised him to modify his first name from Frank to Gary, which is the same name as her birthplace of Gary, Indiana. He started appearing in film roles that got him closer to what he needed most. The likes of Tricks in 1925 will surface. Soon big studios noticed him, and in 1926 Cooper entered a contract with Samuel Goldwyn Productions. His earliest significant role was when he played a supporting role in The Winning of Barbara Worth in 1926 with Ronald Coleman and Vilma Bankey. It was believed that Cooper's knowledge of Cowboy's life enhanced his performance as the film became a success, with analysts identifying him as a promising star artist. It was said that Goldwyn hastily offered him an extended contract that later became a five-year deal with Jesse L. Lasky at Paramount. In 1927, Clara Bow assisted Cooper in getting a bigger role in Children of Divorce and Wings, which later won an Academy Award for Best Picture. Then Cooper played an initial starring role in Arizona Bound and Nevada by John Waters. Pairing with Fay Ray in The Legion of the Condemned and The First Kiss, and promoted by the studio as Glorious Young Lovers, did not achieve much but he continues to improve with each film as his female fans increased with a thousand fan letters a week. The studio took advantage of this and paired him with famous female lead actresses like Evelyn Brent in Beau Sabreur, Florence Vidor in Doomsday, and so on. When Cooper made Lilac Time with Colleen Moore, it turned out as the best-selling film of 1928. He got an epic breakthrough as a movie star in 1929 with The Virginian by Victor Fleming, co-starring with Mary Bryan and Walter Houston. It was recorded that the passionate image of the tall, attractive and cautious cowboy hero that depicted male liberty, bravery and integrity in the film was inspired in part by Cooper. He was quick to adapt to sound acting from silent film acting, unlike his peers, and naturally transitioned with his special vocal which they said made his on-screen role play perfect. His rising reputation saw Paramount casting him in several westerns and period of war dramas like Only the Brave, A Man from Wyoming and others. He then depicted a sullen legionnaire in Joseph von Sternberg's film Morocco with Marlena Dietrich, which was rated as his best performance. The Hammett crime film City Streets and others would follow, although Cooper took a break from Hollywood sometime in 1931 and returned months later to continue his success story. He got married quietly to Veronica Balfe, also known as Rocky, in 1933, in a union that produced a daughter. While everyone believed that the union affected changes positively on Cooper's past romantic carelessness, 
It also caused a lot of trouble for the couple as the duo parted on May 16, 1951, signalling an unhealthy union that severed relations between the couple and their daughter. Before this time, Cooper was involved in various kinds of indiscriminate romantic affairs that were not too good for his image as a role model, especially the ones with leading actresses. First, it was Clara Bow, the lady who assisted his career. While Bow was busy getting him movie roles, the two were getting the flick off screen. Then came the famous actress Evelyn Brent, whom he encountered on set in the film Beau Sabreur. Again, Cooper cemented a passionate affair with Lupe Velez after doing The Wolf Song together, described as the most significant romance of his early life. The affinity went on for two years, but Cooper was not a man to be trusted with beautiful ladies, because he would not hesitate to switch allegiance to any lady that caught his fancy, as he did with another co-star, Marlena Dietrich. The feud that ensued thereafter between Velez and Dietrich was part of celebrity gossip at the time, with Velez said to have tried to shoot Cooper at a train boarding area. But Cooper was quick to flee the scene in what some writers describe as the Mexican Spitfire. So while the Velez bond existed, Cooper had a brief connection with Marlena Dietrich that also began through filming Morocco and with Carol Lombard, which he captured from I Take This Woman in 1931. It was said that after marrying fellow Hollywood star Clark Gable, Lombard shocked fans when she supposedly voiced that not only was her husband the worst lay in town, but that Cooper was more fun to be with intimately. This caused a lot of followers to wonder about the kind of spell Cooper cast on his female victims. The insinuation was said to have angered Gable so much that he purchased a car one foot longer than Cooper's, just to prove a point. Cooper equally crossed boundary with an illicit affair with the American-born Countess Dorothy de Frasso, while residing at her Villa Madama somewhere close to Rome. Now highly famous, Cooper was on vacation in Italy at the time because he took a time off from acting. Here he became amorously involved with this Italian Countess, who was at the time legally married to a powerful Italian man. Not even the exalted personality of the lady's husband could stop him from humouring in romance more so as the ugly incident was happening mostly at her villa. They equally went on an expedition together somewhere in Africa. Did Cooper also have an intimate with a male partner? Popular gossip then was that he was also seeing co-star Anderson Lawler. The rumour may have come from the fact that Lawler was not a straight man. Cooper and Lawler were said to have shared an apartment during their production, and some persons accused Cooper of being involved in such an affair, while unrealistically involved with the likes of Lupe Velez and Clara Bow. There seems to be no end to this drive to insanity, as Cooper was said to have continued his philandering as he co-starred with Patricia Neal in The Fountainhead, after which he did another follow-up off-screen. He was 47 at the time, while Neal was just 21. Recall that Cooper was legally married to Veronica Balf at the time, and so when she got pregnant, Cooper was said to have pressured her to abort the baby. An out-of-wedlock child at the time is not condoned by studios, and so Neil was left with no better option than to do as he wished. Without remorse, Cooper went on to hook up with yet another co-star, Grace Kelly. An altercation occurred between him and Neil, who seemed to have fallen deeply in love but she got the shock of her life when Cooper told her he prefers his family over her. Neil was heartbroken, physically and psychologically, which caused her to abandon her acting career for her interest. After years of womanising eventually led to his temporal separation from Veronica Balf, it was said that since they were not officially divorced, things changed when they met in Rome, alongside their daughter to see Pope Pius XII in 1953. It was understood that this visit did save their marriage as the two later reconciled. Although Cooper got baptised Episcopalian as an infant, he was rehabilitated into full Catholicism in 1959, and was said to have often reflected on his previous illegal behaviour, but would take solace and guidance from the church. But just when we thought the curse was over... Cooper did not think so, even while still married to Veronica Balfe, because they two stayed together until he died in 1961. He was said to have gone for an ultimate affair with a well-known costume designer, Irene Lentz. 
Irene was also married to another man at the time. In her confession, Irene was allegedly said to have confided in her friend Doris Day that Cooper was the only gentleman she truly loved. Just a year after his death, Irene was reported to have checked into a room at the Knickerbocker Hotel in Los Angeles and dived through the bathroom window to her demise, all the way from the 11th floor. Gary Cooper is a powerful American actor, revered for his quiet screen character and discreet acting style. He got a double Academy Award for Best Actor, three nominations, an Academy Honorary Award in 1961 for his all-time accomplishments. Cooper remained one of the top film characters that Hollywood ever produced. The American Film Institute also ranked him 11 on its grade of the 25 greatest male stars of classic Hollywood motion pictures. Gary Cooper died on the 13th of May 1961 when he turned 60 of cancer-related illness. Leading to his final day of demise, he was quoted as saying, I know that what is happening is God's will. I am not afraid of the future. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. There is no doubt that Gary Cooper was able to satisfy the fantasy of women. This is also the case with Tempest Storm for men. How Tempest Storm gave you all that you wanted. Let's find out from this video.